Hello. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Patriot Crusader Missions Christian Warrior Talk live on Strength and Honor Edition. Because it's because it's Friday. So let's start it off with some strength and honor. All right. Seeing some numbers go up. Yeah, let us let's know see who's here. here. Sound off. Let us know here who's here so we can give you a strength and honor. Big day tomorrow. Big, big day tomorrow. We're making progress. Dog barking. Yeah, why is there a dog barking? Because the dog, like we, dogs are from the devil. I swear to God. I believe yeah. this. We've decided this this week. There is no rainbow bridge. There is no rainbow it's bridge. It's a fiery bridge back yeah. to where, whence they came from. <laughs> yeah. It is a rainbow bridge, and at the end is a pit all the way to the spawn of hell where they come from. Good and this is yes. coming from two dog lovers. Every time I want to get in the Bible, who gets in my way? Dogs. Every time something good is about to happen, what gets in the way? Dogs. Can't go anywhere. Why? Dogs. They suck. They suck. <laughs> they suck your soul. Now they are cute, and you know there's moments. There's wonderful yeah, moments. It's ten percent. It's ten percent. Ten percent. It's down to ten percent. Yeah, I think it's ten percent. I think ten percent mm. good, ninety percent suck. Oof, that's getting into the ratio of not worth it. Yeah. You forgot to put my name up there tonight. Oh man, let me that fix while we're that. Going? Hold on, hold on. All right, who's now, here? Who's here? I know we get a lot of dog lovers on here. Lauren's a reformed crazy dog lady. I'm I a was reformed a crazy dog, lady crazy when dog he met guy. Me. Yeah. I'm gonna pop over YouTube link over to Facebook if you want to hop over there and join us. Get this going here. Everyone's being quiet tonight. All right, Chris Scott. Yeah, Chris Scott. Hold on. He's he's typing something. Then we'll strike and honor you. On. There we go. All right, there's our peeps. That first strength and honor is a little weak. Pump up the heart. Right, here we go, man. Oh, man. Okay. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Got it. Steve. 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 Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. That was about to be what Jason was going to say when he was talking about the big day. Big day. It's his birthday. Yeah. <laughs> My birthday was last <laughs> month, but because of events beyond our control, we couldn't do anything. So we bumped it to tomorrow. And, you know, you guys all were awesome. Like I got like 300 and something people wish me happy birthday. I've never had that number ever. And it was amazing. And I thank you all. And uh, I appreciate all the thoughtful things that went into that and everything you write. But tomorrow. Uh, celebrating tomorrow tomorrow we be celebrating and tomorrow steve raleigh is coming to put the final touch on the cross he's coming to paint the cross yes. with that like wicked expensive you still haven't gotten the lights i haven't gotten the lights that's oh, all right they gotta it'll dry still glow up there yeah. on its own it's been glowing on its own just natural so wood. he's got this super reflective white paint safety paint that is gonna light oh that sucker God. up from the from the moon. Wow, it's gonna change. It's it's nice that the natural wood is nice, but that's the gonna white, make it the pop. White is certainly gonna make it pop. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. So some other big news. We uh, started the formation of our nonprofit church thingy mission thing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, where Patriot Crusader Mission is about to become a ministry church. Um, so we are. Well, uh, yeah. Ministry church? I mean, because it's one or the other as far as designation, right? See, so we're going church. Yeah, but it's going to be a church ministry. Church, yeah. Okay. So, um, so you know, we're super pumped about it. And, um, you know, it's going to be epic. It's going to be epic. So, um, so it's still, this is like a nine month process. Yeah, for all of the government want want paperwork. Yeah, which they the guarantee that we'll get. They guaranteed we get approved. I don't know how they're going to guarantee that with a name like Patriot Crusader Mission. Lois Lerner, you know, over there at the uh, IRS is going to be like, uh, oh heck no, no. yeah. But we'll, we'll see. Um, 
you know, we've been doing, you know, it, it was funny. I, you know, I was calling around to take the temperature of a lot of people. Um, and I called, of course, you know, my mentor, Ken Graves, and I call, you know, my, I guess my, my, uh, you know, uh, Travis Carey, who's a fellow disciple of 10 Ken Graves. And I'm Ben. Ben, what's up? Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. And, um, you know, I called also David Norsworthy, who's, uh, you know, the finance slash legal guy for Calvary Chapel, Bangor. Mm -hmm. I called Joel Cavanaugh, who is, you know, all, you know, finance and the lead pastor over at the church that I've been, um, I've been fortunate that I've, (laughs) that I've been able to preach from and, uh, as well as some others, uh, influential people around me to say, Hey, is this something I should be doing? Mm -hmm. And, um, without exception, they all said, you know, and I'm not saying this to make myself feel good that, you know, that I've been called by the Lord, that I have a gift for this and then I should be doing it. And Travis even said that I've been doing full time, you know, ministry work for a long time with the yes. podcast and everything else. So it was a great, great, great boost of confidence. Strength and honor to you, my friend. No, oh, thank you. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. I'm back at you. I couldn't do it without you as my anchor. Uh, of support. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Mary Jo. Oh, Mary Jo. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. So I. So uh, what is this? So we've started the paperwork process. Nine-ish months. God willing, we will be approved as a nonprofit. Then we can formally start like fundraising. People get their tax. We can start fundraising now, is what basically we were told. Okay. Um, can we have like do tax write offs and yeah, stuff on donations yeah, now? Yeah. As okay. long as within, I think we, they, it was a crazy number, like 27 months. Oh. Okay. If you're a church filing, you know, and then you never have to file a federal tax ever again. Um, okay. So, and then as far as what you're thinking right now, we're filing as a church, but, but probably the first thing to stand up is doing more like this men's ministry mentoring. Well, we'll be doing online thing. sermons. We'll be doing what we do now, which is, this is fellowship. Mm-hmm. We'll also be doing the fellowship in the mornings, Monday through Friday, mm-hmm. um, the workout the, you know, in the yeah. gym with the guys. And, um, and then we'll see where it goes from there. I'm really hoping to do more and to study on more under, um, under Calvary Chapel Tri-Cities. You know, mm-hmm. I really like Paul Smith mm-hmm. and I'm hoping, you know, he's already, him and his wife already mentioned about me doing a, you know, I'm already speaking there, I think on the 27th of this month, yeah, yeah. 25th of this month, yep. I'm sorry. And then, um, you know, they already asked me to do a mentorship class over yes. there so yeah you know I, I think it's all kind of toe in the water and filling each other out and seeing you know personalities work together mm-hmm. and all that stuff but i really like them they've been great and yes. you know yeah. and and all that you know ken said of course if we were local up there you know we would be we under him there. doing yeah. whatever so yeah um just um you know it's just been quite humbling i asked ken onto the board he agreed instantly cool. and was honored to do that we have two people on our board right yeah we need one more one of us could be technically. I yeah, I think we got to explore that. Like they okay. have these positions. So, up, oh, Clay. Good I thought evening. you were taking the night off, Clay. Strength oh, and honor. Strength really? and honor. Yeah. You're supposed to be watching The Last Samurai tonight. Mm. It must be a Enjoying slow part right yeah. now. And he's texting <laughs> us with the volume down. Well, um, very cool. Um, and then capital campaign at some point for our ministry building out back. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, this this process was three grand basically, or whatever. Yep. Um, and that's, you know, that's just the beginning. So, yeah. you know, um, yeah, but we'll do a capital campaign. We'll probably do some fundraisers, doing some sh- like some sh- like obviously some shooting fundraisers. Yeah. And, so you know, because yeah. of my background, it, it just allows me to you know um, be able to do some cool guy stuff, and mm-hmm. we have the property for it. Yes. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Um. So you know, that type of stuff. So again, um, and there'll be other things. I'm sure we'll be in a partner with people. And, you know, one of the cool things I want to talk about for tomorrow <laughs> is, uh, 
it's my, talking about man stuff. My throwing axes came <laughs> in, and uh, we uh, ordered an awesome custom axe target. He's like, can I, can I, can I buy this, please? I, I really want it for my party. <laughs> I've been wanting one. I wanted one all the way back to Memorial Day, and I couldn't get yeah. it in time. And I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I went with this guy. Uh, hey man, pass the ammo exactly. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Hallelujah! Another shot. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I did find the barber shop. I did. Um, you know, I was going on, and we were. Live supposed to be live streaming today to uh, Frank's main channel, which is a million viewers. Um, of course, it didn't work. Um, <laughs> but, you know, still, it made me get a haircut, which I feel good about. Yeah, and uh, Mama Perry didn't have to mess it up Yeah, Ma you. Mama Perry didn't have to come in with the broken clippers. and <laughs> Yeah, so, but anyways, <laughs> thanks, Clay. Um, the time I did, I... I cut the front so he was camera presentable and the back was just a disaster because we ran out of time. The things you we, we learned to do during COVID. Just for the camera, yeah. Yeah. We're good to go. So uh so he's bringing this custom like um awesome real wood um axe target where you you know I mean it's really cool. Are you going to and say he, what you got on this or are you going to just post pictures? I'm going to let's just say he made 3 Double-sided targets. One side is our logo, and then on the back side is some some familiar faces that someone might want to throw an axe at. Um, in the most Christian way possible. The most Christian way possible. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, something that you would want to practice your your sighting on. Not that you're doing anything to these people, no. really. No. It's not a voodoo doll. It's just. <laughs> An image that you wouldn't mind throwing an accent to. Kind right? of like your um, Obama toilet paper. Yes, exactly. I have some <laughs> amazing Obama toilet paper that every once in a while I really want to um, I use, even though it's terrible toilet paper. <laughs> um, all right. So this guy is driving down from... Northern Virginia tomorrow to bring these yeah. things. And I think he, I think part of the reason why he agreed to make the trek is because he's excited to uh, pillage <laughs> our acreage of wood. Yeah. Yeah. Wood. We got, we got a lot of wood here and I'm hoping he can find some stuff he can use. He makes amazing craftsmanship type stuff like, you know, those um, root, you know, tables. tree root yeah, tables so, where so they pretty. kind of invert them. And the roots hold up the yeah. table glass. So is this, this, is, yeah. So this is the kind that Clay is saying is the good quality for throwing. This this was rated the top throwing axe uh, by the Axe Throwing Association. There's right an now. Axe Throwing Association. Yeah, it's become a big deal. That's but really um, this one here, um, I the, told him he doesn't want me to to be with like within fifty feet of. Yeah, I them. read an article and this was rated number one, yeah. and they were they were cool. So I got them. Um, and we'll see how they go. Again, the goal isn't to destroy the wood. I want the wood to stick around because I don't want it to replace it every five throws. No. You know, like I don't want it to sink 40 feet deep into the, into the thing and split it. I just <laughs> want it to, to stay in, <laughs> you know, fly through and stay in. We'll see how they do. Have you done this before? I've thrown them a couple times. Not, I mean, not anything lengthy. We used to throw knives all the time at the team. Okay. Not like in an official, like we're ninjas throwing <laughs> knives, meaning we're bored and we got four hours to kill. There's a tree. Let's all right, let's let's it. throw knives until someone cuts themselves and we have a doctor visit, which was me. <laughs> meaning that I'd be sewing them up. Like time after time, yeah. we're going to throw it until somebody bounces it off the tree, isn't paying attention, or they're throwing it in the ground by their foot and they hit their foot. True story. Uh, yep voice yep there's nothing <laughs> worse than hey watch this or which That's, is the, which the modern oh, with the run mo if you hear yeah, that run the, the modern day america version is hold my beer yes yeah. <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> very funny so how are you guys doing it's been a today this week was a long week just like this every, week, every was, week i was thought rough, it was but yeah, and i don't know why it was rough there. But you know, workouts were terrible for me. I, ca I caught up on sleep this week. Yeah. Um, did a couple cardio weeks. Your Hi, brother Bill. Bill is here. What up? 
good. Waiting good. for us to sing a Christian duet. You're going to be waiting for a while, Bill. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, Lauren's been warming up her pipes around the house. But hold on. In here. the house, not Strength here. Honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. You guys heard my singing. It's not good. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even going to pretend that it's good. I mean, it's 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 bad. It's it was really passionate. Bad. But um, and it's even worse when it's bad and you're crying in the middle of it. So now <laughs> you can't even. You know, now it's just cracking even more. And I, it's I just, think I remember a sermon awful. from Ken, and he was just kind of you know having casual conversation before or after the sermon or something, and and he was talking about. He called out one of the congregation members saying, like, this is the worst singer we have. And I think God smiles the most when he sings. He just doesn't care. He just <laughs> puts it up there for the Lord. You know? <laughs> like, so God smiling big on you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's 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 a, a small offering of mine to him, but it's, it's humbling he, he's yourself. getting it all. Yep. I mean, we have not started our uh morning worship family worship yeah we haven't figured out kind of what days are the right days for that but, but about i can tell you what we're going to do which anyone can do right i mean so this it, is talking about from Vodi's book we talked about this last week i think or monday yep about how to change be more deliberate with your family pursuit and um establish kind of Vodi does it daily i think but you can do it you can pick however many days work for you but consistent dedicated worship family worship time if you guys are hearing that devil spawn cry over there that is our our pit bull <laughs> crying and disrupting yet again we talk about god and of course he's gonna whine right along with it <laughs> because that's what they do dogs are of the devil i used to say it was cats cats are the devil <laughs> just dogs are, are the devil and dogs, dogs are the demons whatever i don't know which ones you want to call them mm -hmm. but anyways um what was I saying? Oh. We're talking about worship. Oh, so how we're going to do it. So what we're going to do, and this is a, an easy way to, you know, like ease in. We're going to go on YouTube. We're going to choose Christ-centered songs on YouTube, which is not every Christian song, by the way. If you're playing some Hillsong worship in there, probably not. Mm -hmm. um, if you're playing some Bethel music, probably not. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're doing, you want some like, uh, you know, cr some Christ-centered songs that are praising him, then you grab the lyric version of that yeah. where they put the lyrics across the screen and then you put it on and you turn it up really loud and you sing along and then you just sing along i mean b knows all the words already anyways she does. i mean it's great like i'm totally surprised by the words that she knows the songs and not just whiskey glasses <laughs> by by uh, uh which is just what's his name the guy he local here come on I, Morgan Wallen. Morgan Wallen, yeah. yeah. Didn't they? Our dog was sent straight from heaven. You yeah. all stop bad talking to dogs. No. Dogs are terrible. Well, you just I'm think glad about, yours might earn yeah. it. Ours don't. Yeah, yeah. Just look back now. Think about every time you were trying to get time with the Lord, you're doing your Bible study, or it's time to do something holy, and they butt in. They butt in, and they're needy at that moment. That's what happens here all the time. Got I got 30 minutes or 50 minutes to spend with the Lord. Boom, sit down my book, pig pile on me. Have to, Everyone's um, going to whine around it's, me. It's, it is uh, perpetual lessons learned that you have to manage the dogs prior to sitting down for Lord time. <laughs> Jay, we and the Lord. Put that up. Okay. Don't care if you sound like the cross between a bull moose and gerbil. <laughs> gerbil, there's some gerbil in there. I wouldn't think that Jason Perry could make a gerbil sound. I don't know what I'm crying. I squeak probably. <laughs> Which it doesn't seem like I can sing a patriotic song on Fourth of July without bawling my eyes out. So, no. um, but yeah. So yeah, I haven't watched the end of the sermon because I was outside the door listening in. So I, you were, you cried during that last song. Yeah, I've, I've cried during that one. I've cried during the first one. I heard, I, I God bless America. One. I mean, it was bad. So, <laughs> um, it happens like Jake more than I. I happen to like Jake, their dog, more than uh, most humans. Yeah, you're you. you, you yeah, I used to nowhere. Say that. Nowhere in the Bible does it say to love your dog. Everywhere in the dog in the Bible, the dog is spoken uh, is spoken with. Absolute disgust in the Bible. Look at it. I mean, just just looking at it. And the most broken humans, and I'm not pointing this out to you, Danae, because it used to be me when I was an atheist. What did I love more than people? Dogs. Lauren, before she was saved, what did she love? 
dogs. The most broken people I know throw all their love into dogs and they don't love their neighbor, which puts you in a pretty crazy place uh, when it comes to in a bad place, not crazy when it comes to this. So I know what you're saying and I know you don't mean it. But if you had a choice between saving a person or a dog, I hope you would let the dog go across the rainbow bridge right into the pit and have a fall <laughs> down. <laughs> straight down maybe there. Maybe it's just ours. Yeah, maybe it's maybe just ours. It's maybe just... everyone else has great dogs and never do anything. But I just, it's a trend that I've noticed. The most broken people well, that latch on. True, yes. They make idols of their pets. Yes. Well, especially the ones who choose not to have kids. The My dogs are my babies. That was going to be me. 100%. That was, totally. That was me. Totally. So, again, not to beat up on dogs. I mean, I, I joke. I love dogs. There's a reason why we have three. We just have we have a lot of dog in a small house with a broken fence and not enough places we're not, to put them. We're not, right up, we're not set up for success here. No. So, so they, for the dogs and for us and yeah. for the baby and for me. Blah, 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 blah. Anyways, you didn't tune in to hear about our anti my anti-dog rants. Who else is here? We need more people chiming in here. We see many more numbers on the screen. Yeah, see make comments. sure you mash that like button. People, also, are, people are thirsty. We need to strengthen on somebody. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Also, remember, peeps, remember, we have the super chat function. So if you want to donate to our new 501c3, <laughs> um, go ahead and hit the stickers. You can choose how much you want over there. Oh, and uh, hold on. I'm, mute that, mute that. There we go. Um, and you can do oh, this. Kathleen Parker. Hi, Kathleen. Kathleen, what up? Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Are Strength you watching the movie too? So, um, Is this like a movie night, movie event? Clay said it was intermission. Send the mask to us. We will love her and so will Jake. Done. If you weren't so darn far away and then going to California. Yeah, I mean... If you guys were down the road, I'd be in the. I'd, I'd stay. I'd can't. I'd cancel the show tonight. <laughs> put her in the back and drive her straight over there. She is so sweet. She's so loyal. She's awesome. She's the best behaved out of them all. Of them all, without a doubt, she just can't help being giant. She can't help being giant. And yes. she's Lauren's least favorite. I don't know why she's so mean to her. I'm like Lauren's totally mean to her. <laughs> I will agree with one thing that he said, which is that she's my least favorite. There's no reason for her to be your least there favorite. There has to be a least favorite, and she's my least favorite. But, I mean, she's the best behaved. She's my least favorite. She's <laughs> I mean, she's the one breaking out of the fence right now. Yeah, she my, did show the my, my dog is staying in there. The door could be wide open, and she'd be still. Your dog would be afraid to go outside. Your dog is insane. <laughs> All right, we promised we would stop talking about All dogs. Right, done, done, easy. <laughs> So, so anyways, just letting you know that the super chat function is there and the sticker function is there if you want to put anything on that. Now. And if anyone wants to call in tonight, holler. I'd yeah. Love, to, hear love to have you guys come in. Love to hear, um, you know, any ideas or thoughts you have about Patriot Crusader Mission. We're going to keep that name. Um, there was a talk of renaming things to Patriot Crusader Church or some other stuff. And I, I really didn't want that. Um, at first I'm like, well, it's terrible branding because no one who's searching for a church is going to be looking for a mission or they might be confused. And then I'm like, that might be a good thing. I mean, the last thing we want is a bunch of, you know, crazies coming in. And I say that with the most love, of course, <laughs> the loving, the you know, love. um, expecting one thing and, and not meeting their expectations. Yeah. Now maybe, you know, God would reach out to them, touch their hearts, and we might save them. But I don't know. We'll see. I think, yeah, all, all in time. Yeah. So uh, what I want to go over a profound, I mean, to me, it was like a sledgehammer to the face moment. Um, one of my friends is very stubborn. I won't say their name, whether it's a guy or girl. Mm -hmm. But um, I think they are of the belief system that God is Santa Claus and he gives out, he forgives sin like that. Like, you know, except there is no naughty list. Just everyone gets forgiven no matter what, whether you really mean it when you repent, whether or not you say the prayer and poof, you're good to go forever. You know, and I'm, I'm slightly 
um, I'm slightly exaggerating the point yeah, to make it, yeah, right? Yeah. Like I, that I say you they are, don't no really person, believe that. I would say you are exaggerating. Right, slightly. but yeah. um, to make a point, I'm just saying one thing. And they use some statements I said in the past when I was an atheist and they were trying to lead me toward God or I was, you know, my struggles with the Father. And Mary Jo, oh my God, thank, thank you. Thank you. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. I love how it describes whatever emoji things you guys can do when you pay for something. Pair character lying on the side, raising his arms while saying how it's going. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, um, but... You know, in, in defending my faith, like I've been posting a lot of Paul Washer stuff, uh, Vody Bauckham stuff, um, and, and others, um, in my attempt to work on them to, one, um, give up some of their sinful behavior, which they were con convicted and walked away from it, which I'm, which I'm, praise the Lord, thanks yeah. for that. Strength and honor Strength and honor that. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. But I found a radical discrepancy between modern churchianity, Santa Claus, God. Mm -hmm. I mind me by the Santa Claus, the rainbow, hug it out, Jesus. No judgment, no wrath, no hell. Everyone goes except for people who don't believe in God. Yeah. And even then, we're not sure, right? We're not sure. We'll get a chance. One yeah, time. whatever, yeah. right? Um, and... The God I was reading about through his words in the Bible. Mm -hmm. They did not match up. Mm -hmm. I do not see the rainbow hug it out God anywhere in that book. And through the New Testament, you did not see Even, that. No, nobody talks about hell more than Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Jesus talks about hell more than anyone. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the one who said, rip your eye out. If it causes you to sin or cut off your hand, mm -hmm. that's pretty hardcore stuff. Yes. Because it's yeah. better than that than burning in hell for all eternity. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I take Jesus at his word, you know, and they he's wise man. He, yeah. <laughs> and so the person who I'm talking about always dismisses the Old Testament when I'm throwing Old Testament at mm -hmm. them. And that all new, new that's Testament Old Testament. Status. That's yeah. not, you know, Jesus came. So today, this person threw uh, one of the Psalms at me. That's a rainbow unicorns uh, Psalm saying that, hey. Well, more more so that it, the translation chosen was the one that kind of converts everything to more fluffy. Yeah, language, the New Living right? Translation, which is barely the Bible at all, um, you know, softens it. And then, you know, the whole linchpin that hangs on that whole thing is God will forgive and he's a father and blah 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 and all this stuff in those who fear him yeah it's qualified by to those who fear him. yeah to those who fear him so without to those that fear him everything else above is gone now there is nowhere in this bible where they it says not to be afraid of god there are times in the Bible that says, do not be afraid. It's because God's in his presence and, or that, you know, and then he's not going to kill them for that mm -hmm. or the angel of God or whatever. Fear not. Uh, and they want to converse with them. But everyone in the Old Testament um, and everyone today, sh you know, should know that if you are a sinful person, which we all are sinful people, and some of us are working on being sanctified, and we'll talk about that. You cannot stand in the presence of God in heaven like that. Mm -hmm. If you have unrepentant sins, I fully believe you're going down. Straight down. And we don't know when that's coming. We don't know what's there. We don't. And I know that there are people who are Christians as insurance. Yeah. And those are the Christians that say they're Christians, but don't change the way they live. Mm -hmm. That's for the 99% of Catholics who don't live biblically. Right. That's for the whatever it was seventy something percent of evangelicals that don't live. Yeah, and I mean, the, the, there's the people who use it as the insurance policy, who kind of know they're continuing on in their ways, and then there's the people who truly are being told by their pastors and the, fl the fluffy churches, as you've talked about, they're going about, straight that, to hell. That they believe they are truly doing what is asked of them as a Christian. Right. So then this person, you know, I, I shared the resources there. 
And this person who has, you know, very little Bible literacy starts trying to tear down Paul Washer. And I'm just like, all right, let, let me frame this for you as easy as it says. Oh, I know, Clay, I 100%. Um, and I said, when you get to heaven and you're standing naked before Jesus, literally, you're standing naked before God. And he can see everything you've did. He can see all your intent. He knows all your BS. He knows all your poses. He knows everything. You are 100% transparent, uh, percent transparent for him. Are you going to be up there? And when he says, okay, you know, he starts, you know, are you going to be up there and be like, oh, shucks, I could have sinned more. I didn't realize there was more grace. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to be like, dear Lord, I am I am horrified by the sin that I committed against you, the crimes I committed against you. So I don't think you're going to get up there and be like, man, I sure wish I had sinned more because he would have forgiven me. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. If you truly love him, it's like saying that, you know, man, I could have got away with beating my wife more. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. And, um, you know, so to me that if there is a side on this, I would rather be conservative and err on the side of godliness than trying to fit as much sin in my life as I possibly can to squeak in. Yeah. And so the Paul, do you want to explain the Paul Washer video that you saw? I know you shared it and I know probably a few people have already watched it. Yeah. It's just, are you a Christian or not? And, you know, basically it was, you know, is the Holy spirit working in you uh, through sanctification, meaning, um, you know, are your sins falling away from you? Are you lose? Are you horrified by? Yeah, and that's and that's the part I want to get to. All right, uh, Benjamin, thanks for bringing me back on point. I know I get lost out there. Um, so, and then I'll I'll get to your guys there. So the thing that made the you know the thing that was my stumbling block as an atheist coming to this was the contradiction of what the rainbow unicorn butterfly. Uh, church was telling me to what God was telling me in his book. Yeah. Okay. And he is always the he same. There was just, there's too much. He just, he just changed how we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. It used to be by following the laws. And when you broke the law, you had to make sacrifices and you had to live a certain lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus came and gave us the model, which is Jesus, which is a sinless life. Sure. Yeah. That we're supposed to emulate him command, and believe command, in him. Commandments. And and to emulate mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And that's all that's changed. God is still gonna throw a ton of people in the lake of fire. The God who who killed every living thing on the planet is still the same God. And that's why this loving father image, you know, thing in heaven. Um he does love you. He does want you in heaven, but he will not tolerate imperfection. Mm. You Un, will be especially uh, unrepented or insincere repentance well, for that, for that imperfection. Well, that's, that's what an unrepented sin, mm -hmm. right? You can't, you can't, he will not tolerate it. Yeah. He sent his son because he loved us so much to die on the cross, to give us a way to get there. Right. That does not mean that you can suck at believing in Jesus and get in. His son for that, then the suffering and all that's for you to take that for granted and be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that, so I'm gonna do that. Here's the standard: when you do anything, and this is condemning as heck, but it works for me. When you say anything, you do anything, and you're wondering if you're off or if it's your pride or if it's your anger. Would you be happy with Jesus sitting in the room? You doing that? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that'll fix you up right away. So let's get to some of your comments. You want to read the comments? Yeah, I mean, we've been putting them on the screen. Um, but so Clay, Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. And he said, pay attention to this part, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Uh, and then Chris Scott said, there are those who are, there are those who aren't, and there are those who think they are, but they are not. Yep. Yes. And the one that's on the screen, God is the same yesterday, today, forever. He's not fickle or temperamental. Sin is separation from him. It, exactly, guys. And that was my number one, one of my number one stu stumbles as an atheist. I'm like, oh, you guys can't even agree on who he is. Mm. He agrees on who he is. Mm -hmm. Universally, he agrees on who he is right here. Right. But no, we want to make him more like the world 
We want to make it more like, uh, you know, the compromises that everyone wants to do. Let me explain to you what's something on compromise. When you compromise, when you compromise, everyone loses. Everyone loses. There is no compromise. God does not compromise. Not about this anyways. Yeah. There is truth and there is lie. God does not compromise on truth, which is him. He is known as the truth, the I mean, way. It's not his truth, and then we can have my truth? No, no. There's only <laughs> one truth, and that's God's truth. The creator of everything gets to author what is true and what is not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was so profound on me today, and I was so thankful for working through that, that I could go to an atheist who's like, yeah, well, well this, that, and the other thing. But it's also not such a – it's not as uh, – an attractive sales tactic as it's not supposed to be. Yeah. I mean, sure. That's Jesus true. will start sermons with thousands of people there and would lose a lot of them. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved be steadfast and movable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Exactly. John, he's here. Welcome to the free land. Hope your cabin is great for you. Settling in. Hopefully the cows don't moo, moo all night and keep you up. <laughs> or moo too early in the morning. Yeah. Keep the gerbil away from them. They'll step on them. Stop it. Sorry. I'm worried. You guys are sharing I'm, a birthday party. I'm, while you have I'm, to play I'm nice. worried about his, his little dude. Did Jack make the trip? That's question number one. If, well, just to answer that question first. <laughs> I'm not going to say a word. Yeah, better not. Benjamin, it's not just saying a one-time phrase. That's a public declaration and starting point. It's changing to conform to his will and take continual introspection, not works, but transformation. And that's, uh, we watched a video and, and you've talked, I can't remember. I don't know where I talked it about it. Yeah. One of these podcasts recently or not, but about, um, what is it? The uh, prayer, sinner's prayer. Yeah, that the sinner's prayer has led more people to hell than just about anything. Yeah, because they think it's that that they one time that, yeah. public dec declaration in often cases, um, and they were really ripping, you know, the the sugar rainbow pastors who make kind of a big deal about saying that at the end of their um, services and people stand up, but they don't really mm -hmm. know, you know, what and then there's, and then there's no kind of stepping off point after that. Um, and I definitely was thinking back to. Gay about the point, yep. which we talk about a lot. Because um, I mean, I like I liked that moment, but in in retrospection, I can see the harm in it too. Con conversion you know? without discipleship is nothing. Yeah, it is. It's not, an empty promise. They did. I will say this for them, and, and I never did it, so I didn't. I don't know what that process. Is. They they did say if you said that prayer today, there, please go find the table out in the lobby so that we can help you kind of with your next steps, give you some material. So I don't know. I mean, I doubt that the the handoff went all that far, but they did. It sounds like they did try. Amen, Harold. Harold. Here's Hi, Harold. Harold. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. It's all about self-denial. And the thing that I like is you take a guy like Vody Bauckham or Ken Graves or, you know, just about any of these strong giants in the faith, and they'll tell you it's hard. Mm -hmm. It is hard being a Christian. Yeah. It is denying the world around you well, and denying yourself a lot. worth it hard? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Which, which is why when you look at, you know, I think back to my um, – you know, my 4th of July sermon of um, that piece, the American crisis or whatever it was called, mm -hmm. on why freedom is so hard fought because heaven knows the appropriate price to put on godly things. Mm -hmm. And the godly, then what more, what is more heavenly than freedom? Mm -hmm. um, again, I am paraphrasing that and butchering yeah. it off from memory. So yeah. please don't, you know. It was beautiful. You know, but I mean, think of anything that that Here, let me, that we work up. at that when it's successful, marriage is hard. And if you think it's easy, that's usually when it fails. Parenting is hard. If you think it's easy, that's usually when you fail. I mean, so of course, I, it, it goes in line that those things which you're also supposed to be doing in a godly manner, that Christianity is going to be hard, but it's worth it. 
Yeah, so let me read this to you. It's a little lengthy, but I think it's important. <clears throat> so these are the times. So this was uh, Thomas Paine, December 23rd, 1776. You sorry. just. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <gasps> Click out of your window. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands by it now, now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us. I that's that, a great line. Yeah. That the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives us everything that gives everything its value. Heaven knows how to put a proper price upon its goods. And it would be strange indeed if so celestial an article as freedom should not be highly rated. Mm hmm. I mean, well, right. that that yeah. right there, yeah. that when, when Washington was getting his butt kicked and was losing battles and guys were freezing to death and starving, that is part of the, the piece that he read to them that fired them up to turn, to turn the course of the war. Jasko, welcome. Well, hey, Jasko, here you go. Strength and honor, strength and honor, strength and honor. So do you go to the point? Or went to the point. So you are in the Charlottesville area. Is that? Am I understanding that correctly? We have um, certain feelings about the point, but we know there are good people that go there. We're mm -hmm. just not a fan of the administration. So um, have a blessed night, all. Got to get back to the movie night with my daughter. Stay awesome. strong in faith and hope. Promote the kingdom of heaven as you go, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Right. Hey, Amen, Clay. Clay. Good luck to you on see your radio you, show in the morning see and that you're co-hosting. And see you at the party, which again to every one of our Patriot Crusader mission family, you're welcome to my birthday party tomorrow. Um, you are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome to be come here and celebrate with us. I don't have a sermon to write this time before <laughs> I go to bed, so I'm gonna have it. fun. You can enjoy yourself. I'm actually gonna have fun, so um I and won't as, be stressing as, it. Um uh, we won't have to be uh transporting tons of kids on yeah. tractor rides. Yeah, I won't have kids asking for rides in the side by side Wonderful every kids, five minutes. But yes. Yeah. Seems like BLM is coming in to the church to the point. Is that what you're saying, Jesco? Dude, I'm gonna give you my I'm, yeah, I'm gonna give you my opinion on them. And this is not my opinion of you. I think Gabe Turner is hundred percent compromised. He lives in a house that was donated to him, not to the church. Um, and the assistant pastor at the time, who I like, I'm not gonna name his name, also got his donated to him by a wealthy congregant and then they're up there the whole time from the point before they built their building screaming at people to donate money to give more money to give more money give more money and um and you know and he hides the fact he lives in a country a country club um he's the most compromised phony pastor he's everything that's wrong with christianity now he may have got into it for the right reasons but he's so insecure and he's got so many wounds when i wanted to do an exit interview he refused to meet me he said he was too busy of a pastor i was just gonna i just wanted to offer him some correction so that he could go and crush it so he's a coward and a 100 shell if you look at him when you're looking at him he's his lights are on and then as soon as his light the light turns away it's plastic and empty so i just wanted to put that out there. that's not saying that your greeters aren't the best in the business. I've never seen anyone in the world greet as well as you guys do. Your salesmanship to get people in there is phenomenal. I love my coffee mug when I came in and all that other stuff. And, you know, of course, your band worship is epic. I mean, that's what all these light churches do. But, um, but there's a real problem at the top. So, again, you know, I'm not going to beat you up for there. I'm glad you're here. Um, we're here to put out hard truths and teach you how to apply the word to your life. And we haven't been there in several years now, so maybe there's a maybe they've turned it around. But if you yep. say and BLM has moved in, I don't think so. But speaking of the point, one of the, and I've been meaning to bring this up for several of our episodes now. One of the point family that we met briefly there, I think he's one of the assistant pastors. Um, he just lost his four-year-old daughter very abruptly. Um, to a, a rare heart condition diagnosed in May and she passed Terrible. away in June, four years old. So um, definitely kind of prayers and, and, and 
well, heartfelt ahead, thoughts pray, pray for, for that. That's terrible. Go ahead and lead us in that. Okay. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, um, we just come to you now with um, really broken hearts about the loss of this four-year-old. None of us knew her personally. Um, we knew of her family. Um, but just since so many of us have kids of our own and some pretty close to that age, um, it just absolutely breaks our hearts to see to see that loss, that light that went out in the world. And we are just so grateful that she was raised in a godly, godly family and um, having confidence that she's in your embrace now. And um, so even though she's in a better place, you know, we're grateful that her suffering was short, um, but her family is, is on this earth and moving forward in that suffering. So please just place your hand on them and give them all of the comfort that you can uh, to navigate this time and um, ensure that they do not turn away from you, that they turn into you um, as they navigate this grief. So yes, in Jesus' name. Lord, that you would use this use this, this time of suffering and this time of pain for your glory, that, that they would model the behavior of believers as we saw our friend John Yancey when he lost his young um, granddaughter, mm -hmm. what a mountain of a man he was and how he leaned into you, Lord, and led with his heart, with a heart full of love for you, Lord. We pray that you, you know, you would not test any of us, Lord, in this way, mm -hmm. but we just pray that you use this for your glory and your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Claudia, hey! Yeah, Welcome yeah. to Tennessee. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. <sighs> so the, uh, the, the farm cabin's not for sale, huh, guys? You guys tried to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised that he's holding on to it. Sounds like a beautiful place. Yeah, 100 acres um, in in this in Tennessee right now is gold. Gold. Yeah. Our friends who came down just like us, uh, Scott and Jen, who uh, okay. you guys have seen like on here. Right now, yeah. Now they're they're here now. We'll never see them again after tomorrow. They're, they're, they're busy. They're off. They're doing their thing. <laughs> they bought 20 acres about 90 minutes from us, which is that's the part that sucks is 90 minutes yeah. from us. But they bought 20 acres, um, you know, over the border of the state park, and they're happy. Yes, without John, a doubt, John. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt it is that she is. But, um, you know, uh, angel has another – or the he heaven has another angel. Yeah. Um, that's for sure. So – Yeah, so, so uh, Scott and Jen, they there's no, like, usable structure or anything on this. Right? It's 20 acres, and they are so excited. I mean, they're really going the route of – working the land and living off the land. So um, I think it's good for them. It's exciting. Hopefully, you know, 90 minutes is like forever away, but we'll, we'll see them. Yes. But appreciate you all. Keep up the great work. Thank you for the truth you speak and God bless you all. Hopefully Emily and I may see you in Tennessee someday. We want to get out of this liberal run town. I don't blame you there, brother. Come on down. I can't tell you how much of a difference it's made in our quality of life. Yes. Well, if you ever want to scout things out and come visit, you have a place to please stay. Please come by. We'd yep. love to to meet you and uh, show you what we've learned. Yep. Because um, it can be very frustrating, and you know, because everybody wants to be here right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and here's my advice to everyone who's waiting for the perfect time or thinking the market's going to go down. It's not. Yeah. The more the left goes crazy, we got three more years of Joe Biden. Three more years if he lie, if he can remember his name in three months um, or we tomorrow. Have three more years of this kind of this kind of administration, which is just going to persecute you in all the blue states. If you don't think that more conservatives are fleeing the red states, you're crazy, mm -hmm. and it's just going to go up and up and up and up because these states they're not California where everything was up already six hundred percent, right? Everything there was all like I remember. Back in 1996, people buying condos, guys graduating buds on Coronado Island and buying condos that were interest-only loans. Uh -huh. They would never own the property. Uh -huh. They were just paying the interest, right? And um, so it's not that. They were very undervalued compared to Massachusetts, New York, mm -hmm. Connecticut, mm -hmm. Southern Maine, et cetera. And now they're catching up to normal value, and they're going to go up. Yeah. So um, – so for if the love of God, come get and down scout here. Things out. Put your Trump bumper sticker up or something. You yeah. don't tread on. So me. here's a true story. Um, license plate, <sighs> something, so that the locals 
know that you're on the, the right team so that they might want to actually sell you their property. <laughs> well, here's a true thing that happened to uh, uh, Scott and Jen. Yeah, we shared this last time. But yeah. Yeah. So for those of you who didn't hear, they went down to uh, look at a property and here they come down with their Massachusetts RV, right? And the realtor who calls him, it's for sale by owner, I think. Or no, no. The, the the guy, the, the there was a guy who saw them on the street. He's like, can I help you guys? And they're like, yeah, we're just looking at this property for sale around here. And he's like, well, which property? And they're like, well, that one right there. And they're like, well, it's not for sale anymore. I took it off the market two weeks ago. When I heard some northerners were coming down here to buy it. Yeah, some out-of-staters were coming to buy it. So I took it off the market. Right, because so they're, they're, yeah. afra they're all afraid that, that what's gonna what happened in Idaho and what happened to all these places around California is going to happen here. They're all afraid that the locusts, a.k.a. Democrats, a.k.a. liberals, you know, are going to come here and ruin everything. To Texas, they they yeah. ruin everything they touch. They destroy everything they touch. They are demon possessed and they are they are they're, they contaminate and destroy everything. And everyone here is, you know, many people here, I should say, not everyone. Yeah. But most people here are terrified of that. So if you show up with something with a New York plate, a Massachusetts plate, they can plate, stereotype as likely they can being, stereotype yeah. being a liberal. You, they you, they may not sell to you because they don't have to. Mm -hmm. So um, awesome for sure. Thank you. We will be in touch. Definitely. Any problem, Jasco? Um, so uh, tomorrow the plan is you know everyone shows up at four. Yeah, We're just going to. Yeah, I'm sir, just going to. Okay, awesome. We'll message you, and if you ever want to connect. Directly. You yeah, can find any, us. Anytime. We're, we're Patriot Crusader Mission on Instagram. Yep. Awesome. Very cool. Appala Appalachia is uh Yeah, is you, great. Guys, you have to say it right. Um and you know, and I'm and I'm fighting the fight for you guys. Time and time again, I am seeing people come up here and, and disparaging out of towners for wanting to move here. And I'm trying to tell them it's like, listen, people are going to move here regardless. And you know, it you know, you want it to be they, us. they they called it classic gentrification, which is not true, right? It's not it's not classic gentrification. So there are benefits to everyone around by people coming here, and there are some downs. There are some sure, goods, and there are course. some bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. The good part is for the people who own, they can cash out and make a, some really good money. If they, yeah. Right. Most of them, are if they, the, most of them well, most of them are generationally here. They yeah. own their property. And if they want to cash out and make hundreds of thousands of dollars on something they paid nothing for, they can. Yeah. But most of them are just so emotionally bonded to their, their land that, you know, they're, they're, we're dying here. Well, I'm just saying that the want, so there are ways to, for them to cash <laughs> out on that. All right. How's that working out for you, John? <laughs> <laughs> As you drive home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you'll get pulled over at the border. Um, the other people who, who thrive in this tradesmen, mm. because they can demand more from people who are used to paying more. Right. Maybe we'll get some new tradesmen around here. Right. And some ones that, the people who actually want to work and don't yeah. suck would be great. Some professionals. For once. Yes. Um, you know, the, you know, all the service industry will pick up and they will tip more and they will have more because they're bringing out of state money in. Mm -hmm. This will price a lot of first time buyers out. Mm -hmm. If you're here and you're used to making $10 an hour, you know, like our babysitter, we gave her a 33% raise. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we, we were paying our nanny back in Virginia 18. And then I said, how much do you charge? She's like, I usually charge $10 an hour. And I was like, well, I'm going to pay you 15 because I want you to take care of my daughter well. <laughs> right. And, you know, and to want to be here and that you deserve that. So, She's you know, like, there, okay, there, for you. <laughs> there is a lot of a lot of bad as well. Right. If you let leftists move into your town, then they're going to come with their progressive ideas that have destroyed where they're at, that they're fleeing. And next thing you'll know, you'll have critical race theory in your schools and and, uh, you know, drag queens at your library and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and all the rest that goes with it. Um, so you got to be on guard, but if, if what you don't want is to have a, an out of town or bad attitude and drive away the conservatives. And now you're only left with the crazy leftists that come in that will soon outnumber you. Yeah. And gonna now they're going to change everything and you're going to have a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm -hmm. So again, 
I respect your Appalachia. You can hunt as much as you want. You can chew tobacco as much as you want. Do your moonshine. You can do your four wheeler. I don't care what you do on your property. Let me do what I want to do on mine. Yeah. I embrace your freedom. And I came here to embrace your way of life. I'm not trying to push the way that I live mine on you. I just want to live in harmony with my neighbors and, and share and plug into my community and be an asset to them. Jessica says, my dad and his 10 siblings, God bless his parents, grew up in Charlottesville and were literally dirt floor poor. So many people who were born and raised in that area say, comment on how much it's changed. Well, you and know you who hear to blame. a lot of people like that. There were that kind of family and there's just so much money there now. You want to know what destroyed Charlottesville? UVA. Mm -hmm. UVA, who, which rapidly turned into a socialist propagating left wing brainwashing institution started bringing people there. It's a beautiful place. The students come there, they get turned on to socialism mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful mountain town and, they stay. and then they stay mm -hmm. and then it just keeps going and going and going. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, it's, you know, it's, it's deep blue and not even just deep blue, crazy blue, yeah. like crazy, crazy, crazy blue. And, oh, yeah. uh, and it's, it's, it's the, you know, it was so funny. So I, I got an idea for you guys. And I, I tell you, I think I told you guys maybe on Monday on this, but if you weren't there, something I do now with all sales calls. Oh. So because I'm on LinkedIn as a founder and the CEO of a company, I have people pretending like they know me and they're my best friend all the time. They are trying to sell me their services. It's their job. So if I'm going to talk to them, I am going to spread the gospel. So it's the quickest way to make sure they'll never call you back. <laughs> either that or you're going to make a great friend. Either, either that or you're going to save their soul, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> so now I look forward to sales calls instead of, you know, just hanging up on them. Now I'm like, hey, so have you heard about Jesus? D I know that you read that message on the Hope Report. I'm not sure you shared it on this. Do you want to go find it? This guy, what he what he said about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can find it. It's pretty funny. So you guys are gonna love. You guys are gonna love this transition. And wait till you hear. Um, wait till you hear. Yes, he says all the men were masons and one carpenter. I took up masonry. That's awesome. Yeah, that is great, man. And so needed right now and um, very successful right now as well. You know, so for anyone who's still lamenting if their kids want to go that route versus four-year college, think again. So here is how it started, right? So I put out a article, um, or I put up my sermon, sermon on mentoring, yeah. which if you listen to that sermon, there is no doubt that I am a conservative Christian. Yes. I mean, in that article, I go off. I mean, in that sermon, I go off. And uh, so he's going to pretend like he read it now, right? Or he watched it. You're welcome. I noticed that we connected some time. Oh, so sorry. Here he goes. He goes, hello, Jason. Hope all is well. Just want to drop a note to say I appreciate your recent post about fatherhood. I agree and can relate. Thanks for posting. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, okay, great. I've got a, a Christian conservative here. Let's 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 go. Right. So he said, I said, thanks, Ross. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I noticed that we connected some time ago and thought I'd follow up as well. How is everything going with your business? Are you still in the Charlottesville area? Happy to help uh, you with your projects. However, I can very inspired by your message and the work you're doing mm -hmm. best. I said, Hey Ross, we moved to Johnson city, Tennessee a few months back. It's one of the best decisions of my life. That's great to hear, Jason. What prompted the move and, and what has made it such a great decision? I'm only curious because I live a distance from my family and sometimes struggle with the push pull of that. How has business been through the pandemic and everything else? And I said, the people and culture make this place what it is. It's quality of life. It's still America here. I go, Charlottesville was hell on earth to us. Uh, a self-hating, insane world ruined by the extremely secular UVA. Business has been a catastrophe, and I have never been happier. <laughs> so where does he go as the salesman with that? So here's what he goes says. And listen to the key words here. Thank you for your perspective. <laughs> Thank you for your perspective, Jason. I hope that business turns up for you, or at least you're able to weather the storm how you'd like. 
Now, here we go. This is secular churchianity at its finest. I understand your perspective and all, and always focus on the fact that we're all God's people. I wish you well in your journey and hope that you can see God's glory in all walks of life. For he gave us free will for that reason. And each individual is part of his plan. I immediately pushed back and said, I do not see God's glory in sinful walks of life. By, that, by definition, is the opposite of God's glory. God bless you. So if you notice what they did no there. No reply back. No <laughs> reply back. So what, what you see they did there, I wish you a journey and hope that you can see the glory in all walks of life. If all walks of life are glory to God, then there is no sin, mm -hmm. right? So then he said, and that is why he gave us free, uh, he gave us free will for that reason. That means and each individual is part of his plan. Right. So <laughs> what he is saying there is basically he's celebrating the free will and not the creator. Mm -hmm. Right. And that we get to be our own gods is the implication. There. Essentially. Yeah. And uh, so, again, I didn't I did not let that go unchallenged. And I challenge you and not he, to as well. He went poof. He didn't respond. He hasn't responded. He went to my poor foot, my profile immediately after that and probably took me off his list. <laughs> yeah. So John said quite a few folks heard us talking while we were in the firehouse barbecue. I'm good. And we're more than happy to help us find a place. They even gave us their personal contact info. They said that you belong here. That's how it Great. works. That's, That's how, how um how we got Scott it. and Jen found their 20 acres 90 minutes away. A friend of a friend of a family member of a family member down the road, whatever, you know, yeah, it was not on the market. Sell, wanted to sell to a conservative. Off. Yep. They wanted to carve off some acreage from their bigger lot. And they're like, okay, sure. You sound guys. Yes, so sorry. go get some Trump magnets and slap them on your vehicle when you're driving around looking at stuff. If you got Jersey or New York or Pennsylvania plates, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. North of the Mason Dixon, put on that, put on Trump magnets no. without a doubt. Yep. That a don't tread on me flag wouldn't help. Wouldn't hurt. Yes. That's what calmed down our neighbor across the street. Yeah. <laughs> Panicked. He saw yellow plates. He thought that they were uh, New, New York. York. <laughs> Reno. Hello. Awesome, brother. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. So, um, so anyways, um, as you can tell, it's, it's been a pretty heavy week for us. Um, one getting the, you know, the, the church mini uh, ministry stood up. Um, also we are working on, you know, you want to talk about what we're doing for RW? Sure. Go for it. Um, so operation restored warrior. I know that Jason, you probably heard Jason talk about it. It was a big part of his spirit filling. Yeah, that's um, my second born on date. So my my first born again date was the day I became a scientific, rational Christian. This is true, so I'm going to believe in it. And then ORW gave me the relationship with Jesus. Yeah, so they're a uh, nonprofit, Christian-based nonprofit. They work primarily with veterans. They're starting to branch into law enforcement. Um, but really, their, their focus is show you the true relationship with Jesus, heal from your wounds, and largely it was kind of suicide prevention for vets. Um, they haven't lost anyone who's gone through their program, um, but they have a relationship with uh, the Lindell Recovery Network, which was partly how Jason got connected in with the Hope Report. Um, and so they've made, they've turned their, they usually do like a five day intensive of, of these guys coming out for essentially a small group on site somewhere. And they had taken that content, Mike Lindell, worked with them to, to, to take that content and turn it into a video training series. And then Jason spoke with the um, founder over founder there at ORW, ORW and said, um, this is going to be much more effective for people if they can see it in more than just a video format. So we have experience in creating courses from our active shooter training, um, pretty high level kind of college level course um, interactive. Element. So like all of the different learning styles can all be kind of mixed into this course. So, um, we are working with them to take their video content and break it down and apart into this, um, online course. And the first iteration of it is going to actually be used to the Lindell recovery network platform 
for addicts and yeah. then also um, ORW will take it and use it for their veterans. But it's going to be offered free of charge so anyone can come and take it, which is yeah. fantastic. It's going to so, be amazing. A so couple more weeks, I think, for a couple more weeks to a month probably for them to actually like launch it out. So saving souls um, and – you know, setting people free from chains of addiction, mm -hmm. you know, as well as preventing suicide. So, and the other thing is, you know, everything that we do, you know, it's, it's amazing once you look back at your life, like when I, since I've decided I want to be a full-time pastor and I want to, you know, work in his mission and his mission alone and serve God and, and that's it. That's all I want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, You look back at your life and you see his fingerprints on everything preparing you for that moment. Yeah. Because we, up until COVID year, we'd been putting years and hours and hours and hours and hours of time, blood, sweat, tears, money into Trident Shield, our workplace violence active shooter training consulting company. And it was having an awesome year 2019. 2020 was supposed to be the bomb. 2020 was going to be and our, we bombed. were going to be millionaires. <laughs> and we were going to be millionaires that year. Our pipeline But we were, you it. know, we both were, we were passionate about it. I mean, it was our baby, this company. Um, but then because of COVID, we, we switched gears and started PCM kind of came out of that dead downtime. Um, and I think both of us are surprised to find our passions have completely switched over into this, the ministry focus, but also that, um, you know, so you would think it would be really sad and kind of devastating thing that all of that work that you put into something suddenly doesn't matter so much or 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 it's not even getting used really all that much but as jason just said everything from learning how to make these courses lots of practice public speaking uh you know all of the the aspects of what we did for the for-profit business that we were running completely different topic applies now in a way that we are kind of set up to be successful in and working for God and, and it's serving really, it's God. It's a really beautiful thing. It, it's not one thing went wasted. Mm -hmm. Not one thing. All that public for seven years, I've been public speaking. And now, you know, I get up on the podium and I come alive like never before. Mm -hmm. um, and he sounds know, like a wonderful person, Jasko. Yeah, he sure does. Let's you know. strength and honor to a Vietnam. Strength and honor. 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 So. Outside of Greg Degnan, who is a great friend of mine, who's a hand surgeon, who believed that I would be, a, he, he called that I was going to be a pastor before I even was even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank you guys for believing in me when, you know, there's still, I still have friends that don't believe in me. They still doubt me. They still doubt everything. That's fine. You know, but you guys have been here since wrong. go. Mm -hmm. You guys have been here the whole time. And, um, and you guys have been encouraging me all along, you know, I'm not going to be as eloquent as, um, as Vody or Gordon Hugenberger or all those other guys. I'm not going to be, I don't have the voice of Ken Graves, you know, or the theatrics of him. He can act. He's, he's a natural actor. He's a natural at so many things. But I'm going to be me, and I think my gift is, has been for a long time is to take complex ideas and distill them down to simple concepts that you can apply mm -hmm. instinctively in your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what our active shooter training was. It was all about mm -hmm. taking – everyone else was doing these very difficult, you know, complex things that didn't work very well mm -hmm. because you had to be a full-time Navy SEAL to make them work, and mm -hmm. we took it and made a, a very – effective, deadly, uh, minimal skill, um, you know, program that, that, uh, that anyone can watch, watch once and apply. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do with God's word. Mm -hmm. Right. And where people can instinctively apply yes. the lessons of this yeah, book in their life, mm -hmm. because life is going to throw curveballs at you. You're not even going to know what pitch is coming your way and you need to be able to react off of what it is in the last moment to glorify God in your actions. Yes. So that's, that's my goal. And, um, the warmness in Ken Graves voice today, like knocked me over. Mm -hmm. I've been chasing him down. He's a busy dude. And he was in Philly and he got tied up with a bunch of different stuff. And he called me 
And it, the, the warmness in his voice just really touched me and the assurance mm -hmm. of everything. And you know, that we were instinctively doing what he, what he thought we should do made me feel good. Yeah. And I, I know that um, you didn't need it, but getting his, his affirmation, yeah, um, I'm sure meant a lot. Well, I just, I just wanted to give him veto power. I mean, he's my mentor. He, he, um, you know, I wanted to give him, allow him to say, no, you're not ready for yeah, this yet. Yeah. Or to pump the brakes or yeah. to whatever. And that's, he said, hit the gas. Mm -hmm. So, um, thank you, John. thank you, John. We know that, um, your family. Um, that's why I make fun of your dribble so much because I can. <laughs> he said it. I didn't, John. <laughs> Your birthday buddy over here is just throwing you under the bus. No, man. He's all good. <laughs> so, um, but you guys, you guys have been there for me. Bill, you you have been amazing mm -hmm. to me. Um, you know, Chris, John, um, Danae, um, Che. Mary Jo. Mary Jo. Um, Harold. Yeah. All and you guys the, have the been newer, around uh, around the newer here. newer crew, too. Um, Steve, you know, you guys believing in me and uh, and supporting us just, just by watching a stupid program two days a week, which is going back up to three. I'm not waiting for Ken anymore on Wednesdays. We're just going to keep the same time, do it at night, and uh, that's all there is to it. And, if I, and I'll just do uh, biblical life. Uh, support myself on there and I'll have other pastors step in and when Ken can make it great and when he can, he can, it's okay. I'm not going to deny you guys um, the word. Yeah, that's good. So, um, and you know, maybe Lauren will get on there and start dropping knowledge. <laughs> Do you see the eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. All right, Mary Jo. Both of your sermons were real and honest. That is more relatable and means more than shiny and polished. Absolutely. Well, 100% it's, agree. It's hard to uh, be shiny and polished when you're bawling your eyes out in the middle of your own sermon. <laughs> Which you apologize for, and I think is some of the best parts. I think that shows that everyone watching how sincere you are and how much from your heart you are speaking. And well, that then that then opens them up much more to to receive the message. Yeah, well, I, I, I tell you, um, I don't know how you can look at what Jesus did for us and not get emotional. I don't know how you cannot look at what the veterans and what our founding fathers did for us and to see what we have squandered, the, the remorse in that. Jessica, alcohol used to have too much control over me and caused me so much grief. After many times on my knees crying out to the Lord, I was set free over 13 years ago, and he has changed my life. Praise that the Lord. amazing. Praise the Lord, Jasko. And strength and, and honor. Strength is it appropriate honor to, to strengthen honor? Strength and honor. Strength and honor. It can be any beverage. Yes. It could be apple juice. It doesn't matter. We're just toasting you. Yeah, I have uh, sparkly water and cranberry juice. Because Lauren's prego, yo. But, um... Jessica, I don't know. I mean, since you're somewhat new to the program, I'm not sure if you're aware of um, the Hope Report that Jason does, which he does Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. And it's a testimony-based show um, for the Lindell Recovery Network. And a lot of it is based at um, former addicts and who just are glowing to share their stories of redemption through Jesus. And they're all amazing, amazing stories. Another great one today. Mm -hmm. Another great one today. I mean... Fridays was the best we've had by far. Teresa just crushed it. Um, yeah, and I mean, you had, you had to rank them best, no, but, but I mean, it yeah, was, it was that, incredibly that true. powerful. It was, it was it, incredibly powerful. That's the one I had tears in my eyes the most. Yeah. Um, shared a lot of similarities with her, but she she had uh, unique. Yeah, I think that's probably a, a part of why, you know, why, as you say, everyone's testimony was, yeah. is for somebody. Um, you know, mine is... I, that you're not going to agree with me, boring to a lot of people, but boring. some people relate to it. Yours, you know, so this, you and this woman had a lot of life points that connected, I think, which is why, I mean, it was very powerful to anybody to listen, but I think that's partly why. Yeah, without a doubt. It resonated so much for you. Yeah, and and so, again, if you haven't seen any, go watch Teresa's, which was Friday's. Um, today's was was very, was another great one. Um and um, 
you know, uh, Wednesdays was rough. We had a bad internet connection. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start telling, um, you know, Melissa that, you know, we're not going to take cell phone calls anymore. We need, we need, yeah. we need Wi-Fi. You need to have a strong connection because it just takes a toll on the program. And it just sucks because these people are pouring their hearts out and it'll go silent for three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to hear. So the official date and we shared this Bible, but I have no shame in plugging it a little bit more. So Maddie, who did this Bible, she's um, Travis's wife from um, Calvary Chapel up in Bangor. Originally, now they've done a church plant in Portland, Maine, um, and she painted this awesome Bible. But she has a story, an amazing story of redemption from um, some pretty serious drug addiction. And she's going to be on the Hope Report next Friday. So check that one out, too, because she's, yeah. she's she's like we're like thanking her for coming on and she's like, no, thank you. You know, she's so grateful for the, that's what I find so amazing about people who truly love God, that true born again, they know without a, a doubt that they are only there because of God's grace and redemption in their life for taking away and, you know, everything that they suffered from. They love sharing their testimonies Yeah, and they do it with humbleness and gratitude to be able to share that. Yeah. Where they give all the glory to God. Yeah. And, uh, and they're on fire for it. They mm -hmm. tell it with such passion because they're telling it about their hero who is God, mm -hmm. you know, so and I mean, it's always such a beautiful thing to see that. And that, that, that for me, that's the, they are sincere. They are walking it out. You know, and how many of, how many of us, you know, particularly those of us who before we were saved by God um, would talk about, you know, Tom Brady through the playoffs with, with that excitement and that awe and, you know, heaping glory upon mm -hmm. a stupid sports guy. Mm -hmm. And we don't say that about the creator of the universe. Yeah. You know, who, who was tortured and humiliated and separated from the father because of us, mm -hmm. you know, and, and did that for people who hated him and people who, you know, he he did who were weren't even born yet. Yeah, you know, so just just amazing, just amazing, and uh, and until you can grasp that concept, it's hard to not want to sin. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, you know, and that's something that I think we all need to work on. You know, um, that's been my primary focus: the cost of sin. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's kind of, there's, there's obvious areas of sin. And then, you know, once you can tackle those, it's continue searching and where else can I improve? Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, you know, the goal hopefully is it that you start searching out smaller and smaller and smaller ways that you sin, but you still should clear those out. Yeah, without you know, a doubt. As that video that you watched, the Paul Washer video, it's, you should be getting closer and closer to sanctification. Yeah, and and you know, God says, thank you, Jessica. Yeah, thank you. Um, and as God said, you know, it's in the Bible. You know, we should be pray in prayer constantly mm -hmm. with all of our heart, might, and mind. Mm -hmm. um, so that means dialogue with the Lord, repenting for our sin, and praying for those around us all the time. Not just at the end of the day. Not just when you wake up in the I morning. Need to do better on that. We need to be reaching out. Like opening that channel of communication, putting your energy up to him. Mm -hmm. And we don't do enough of that. And, and I think as, as as we've spoken about before, we are constantly, we being most people, constantly have some sort of noise around us. Yeah. TV's on, music's on, social media's in our face, doing anything other than allowing for the quiet and the solitude for that conversation to happen. Hi, Brandy. Hey, Brandy. Good to see Eating you, brother. Lunch. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. It's Strength 8 and 30 honor. for you. No, one oh. hour back. 9.30? Brandy. Yeah. Brandy, I've never said this to anyone before, but I hope you get fired. <laughs> Joel. <laughs> I've never said that to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you get fired and find a job that doesn't make you do what you have to do all the time. R.C. Sproul reminded us that sin is cosmic treason. 
when we see it from that perspective, the gravity of it is better felt in our lives. That motivates us to sanctification to sanctification 100 percent It's hey, Joel, strength and honor, Joel, strength right? and honor to Joel. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Strength and honor. Guys, don't don't tell him all the the bad stuff I've been saying about him this whole time and, and all that stuff, right? So just keep it on the down low. Yeah, you know how how his all of his congregation said, We want Jason to come back and Joel can stay on vacation. Yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you, Joel. I hope you're having a fantastic vacation. Yeah, I mean, you went there to be a chaperone for your kids, which we all should do, and um, ended up getting a lot of sleep and rest and workout time. That's Good for great. you. That's awesome. Well deserved. Yeah. But treason is a great word for it. I mean, I think that yeah. that um, is something that m more people can uh, resonate with, um, especially people of kind of military mind and things like that. You know, it's treason is, that's a big deal. Yeah. That's a capital offense. Mm-hmm. As it should be. Yeah. You know, very well said, R.C. Sproul. I want to find that quote. That's really good. Yeah. I'm pull that in. See, Pastor Joel for you. Pastor Joel coming in here and <laughs> dropping knowledge. When are you back? I'm oh, sitting here. Are, I'm, you, are you back? I'm talking about Tom Brady, and he's talking about <laughs> <Yeah>. R.C. Sproul. <laughs> I think he is back, but it's their daughter's birthday tomorrow. So they so won't be here. So they're bad birthday over your birthday, which is the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do, but we're going to have more fun here, just saying. There might be axe throwing involved. Yeah. We got some of these. Are you doing axe throwing at your daughter's birthday? Are you doing well? axe throwing at uh, your daughter's event? <laughs> no. We are right here. Sure. Sure. Shoot. Yes, axe go. throwing. And what I'm hoping is that we don't have a trip to the ER <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Please, God. Please, God, no. Okay. I mean, it, it would be kind of funny if it didn't go very far, but someone walked out with one of these in their head and be like, hey, guys. You think that would be, <laughs> as be so it funny? As long as so it wasn't funny. serious. As long <laughs> as it wasn't serious. Like, I got, you know. <laughs> I, I was like, where do you want to put this? And he was like, probably, you know, in the front yard just over there. And I was like, that's where all the kids are. <laughs> I was like, Natural I selection, survival of the fittest. We're going to practice it right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're going to. Good. We'll let you know how that goes, guys. We'll show you <laughs> pictures of these uh, targets. I, I think they're going to be really good. I just think it was funny because. You don't know what you're going to get with a Northern Virginia person. So he kind of gambled when he made this request and he got a message back. I would be very happy to make those targets. targets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we know where you are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, He's making a six and a half hour drive down tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> six and a half hour to drive it because, you know, one he believes in what we're doing. Two, I think he wants to check out some of the wood we have here. Three, he's hoping it's going to land to other business. And, uh, of course, we're going to rave about Joel, it. Joel, you didn't hear it earlier. That's exactly what Jason <laughs> said. Yep. Without the y'all and the SEAL teams was, hey, guys, watch this. Or the modern-day America version is, hold my beer. Yep. Oh, my beer. Hey, y'all, watch this. Yeah, and yeah. that's about when they light the firecracker off in their face. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, is there, I can't believe nobody wanted to call in tonight. I'm just really surprised by that. But I think we should wrap this one up. We're coming up on almost 90 minutes. Appreciate you all. And, um, again, I hope – I hope if you're in the area or you're a close drive by, or even if you want to make a long drive, you're more than welcome to come and be a part of the festivities tomorrow. We will probably be checking in from Facebook and Instagram a couple times to say hello to everyone. But, so what is the, uh, Steve, are you still on or are you um, going to bed? I thought he said he was coming at like 10 in the morning or something like that. But just as far as, um, what's the, are you guys going to paint it tomorrow? So is that like yeah. a part of the party? No, it's before the party. Before the party. It's okay. a two code process. Okay. So I think he's going to come by in the morning, let it dry, and gotcha. then do it the whatever. Okay. I haven't looked at the weather review for tomorrow. I think it was afternoon thunderstorms. Let's see if it's updated. 
there's a trend when we have parties and they're cross related. It rains. <laughs> Let's see. Tears oh, of joy. Oh, tears of joy. Partly cloudy with afternoon showers or thunderstorms. Chance of rain 60%. All right. Give me the hourly breakdown. I need the hourly breakdown. I think in the morning you're going to be okay to get. When does down. it ramp up to over 30%? Uh, oh, you're good through noon. Oh, we're good. All right. So get here early, Steve. Yeah. Eight o'clock, first camp force coat goes on. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. And then once it dries, we'll throw on coat number two and then shiny. Yeah. It'll be shiny. Yes. That's going yeah. to be so different. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, guys. Lauren, take us home. All right. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time of fellowship. We always look forward to our Friday nights with our family. And um, although we we don't all we, we have lighthearted moments and serious moments, we just are so grateful to spend the time together, share our lives together, and grow together um, as we learn how to to walk out your word and your will in our lives. And um, so we're we are grateful for the health that we have and the love that we all share with our family and for anyone who is experiencing any marriage issues or issues with their children. We just pray that you meet them there and that you show them how to get back closer to you and, and that they can resolve those struggles and um, get back walking with you in the way that they that they would like. And um, as we move forward into Jason's birthday tomorrow, please just bless that time of fellowship. And um, if you want to hold off the rain, that would be great. But rain's good, too. We know that you're there and um, just making more memories for us. So that's okay, too. And um, as we continue to talk about sin, Lord, and, and people trying to figure out if they are truly Christians, and if they are walking out how you want them to live, can you just help them reveal in their hearts areas that they need to improve? Um, everyone has something that they can work on, Lord, and, and help just highlight that for them and encourage them as they, as they should that and leave that behind them. So with that, thank you for our health, and um, please bless the weekend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, thank you so much for sharing this time with us. This is what fellowship is about. It's never convenient, but um, it's important. It's really important. And uh, I can't wait to talk with you as well, Jasco, and yeah, hopefully Jessica, you come awesome. down here. And Reno, um, good night and Godspeed. Have a blessed weekend. Oh, you too. Steve's here. All right. Connect with us, Steve. Let us know when you're coming. All right. Text me when you're coming tomorrow, and I'll make sure the ladder's there, and the, and we'll get that sucker up there in the with the um, – Polaris. All right. Be there at 10. Yeah, that, that works. works. All right. We'll see you then. All right, guys. You turn this thing off. Okay. Do your closing <laughs> outro. Uh, oh, thank you. You reminded me. <laughs> I almost forgot about the outro. Have a great weekend, All right, guys. See you guys later. Bye.